Hey, my Thomas here. And today I'm out here with my dad, and he is absolutely loving uh, this Cook's Mill. This is the Cook's MP32, and he's currently cutting a job right now where this is an uh, inch and a half board by Max Width, and he just had all these pine logs dropped off. I think there's like 20 ish pine logs or so. He's cut up a few already. This thing's just powering through it. Uh, we've worked through a few electrical gremlins. Uh, the, the, what do you call it? The little switch that controls the speed going forward. That was one of the things that had to be adjusted. There was, he just reconnected at the little rheostat right there, or right, right there. That rheostat, we had to change that out. And then he also put a new battery on it and a few other things. But now all the electrical gremlins are out and everything. But uh, he's really impressed with the way this mill cut. And it doesn't even, doesn't even uh, struggle or anything. Now this mill here again, now this is one that we got as kind of a stop gap. Um, this is gonna be used until my dad gets his Timber King 2220. Now that's now around the September time frame or so. So we have until September he's gonna be running this mill, then this mill will be up on the market. Now this mill has a lot of extra features. It's literally package deal number four on the Cook's website, but it does have a six foot extension on this. This mill will cut a 20 foot beam, which is pretty awesome that a small portable mill will cut a 20 foot beam. My 1400 mill would not do that. Uh, my 2000 mill will do that. So pretty awesome with this mill, you can cut that. And I'm impressed with the overall quality, the build structure construction of this mill here is stout. I mean, I probably don't even technically need to have <laughs> the middle jacks there. The frame is so freaking stout. Uh, the mill was pretty easy to set up. Once we first got this mill, uh, I did have to work a whole lot on the tracking just because the guy who had it before us, he really didn't do a whole lot with the, uh, I mean, he just ran the mill and that's all it was. That's all he did is run the mill and it did very well for him. But after, you know, just a few years of use and everything and 225 hours, well, needless to say, it needed some adjustment. So, overall, very happy the way this mill performs. Pretty neat design. You see, it just powers through these logs, no problem. But uh, I, I'm pretty impressed with the uh, the build construction of this for a entry level mill. It's pretty good. Now my dad's cut up, I think about 20, 25 logs or so with this. And it's been really good. I'll show you some other stuff he's cut with this, but he's been cutting oak, he's been cutting pine, a little bit of everything. And you know, overall he says like, you know, this is a great stop gap until he gets his bigger mill, but he's definitely looking forward to that bigger mill. So again, he's cut up a whole lot of pine there, some cedar some persimmon and he's got a job right now that he's cutting tons and tons of oak now there's some eight by eights in here now not only just oak the, the guy is building a phenomenal shop and everything he wants a little bit of everything so this board right here that i have my shoe on that is persimmon that's an eight by eight persimmon which is impressive in and of itself i think my dad said the log was 14 or 16 inches in diameter so to have a persimmon log of that size is pretty impressive. Now, this is only part of the job. The guy brings over the oak logs and everything. Dad cuts them up. This is red oak, white oak, persimmon, and then we've got some other logs in the back. Just, just massive, massive amounts of logs. Uh, the cut quality has been great. We've got 10 blades currently, and we've got another 10 blades on order. And then I'm about to go through while I'm up here uh, to go ahead and sharpen up the rest of the blades he has out there and set those on our Cook's Cat Claw Sharpener. So, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna do some more videos with this. Uh, this is just really, now I'm gonna do a searching, this is gonna be a searching for sawmills video because now my dad has had enough run time in this mill. He will tell us, he will tell me and us what he likes and doesn't like about the mill. But overall, like I said, he's he's been pretty impressed and he's producing some lumber right there. I mean, that's, this is, this is a pretty nice uh, gig he's got set up here. <laughs> I mean, it took me a little while to start getting customers, but you know, as soon as they found out, hey, he's got this mill, he's he's been pretty bowed up. But yeah, overall, 
there's a few little things we've had to do with the mill since we got and everything and we'll, we'll have him to kind of talk about that but overall pretty impressed with this mill so stay tuned all right folks now what we're going to be working on is actually cleaning up a little bit around the sawmill finding where the oil drain is which is kind of interesting and uh going over the parts so the filter that's on there is actually a john deere filter it's an am 101207 now i looked online everything gave my information to my dad and everything and he went to the auto parts store and this was the part that came up it was r85348 from car quest and the other thing is it does require 10w30 uh, oil so we're gonna go ahead and put some mobile one in there and uh, a full synthetic because why not uh, the drain plug is right here now they actually I guess gave it a little bit of thought I mean I, I don't think we get oil everywhere but this right here it's a 11 16th inch socket and you have to get like a deep weld socket to get up in there but I looked all over I'm like where in the heck is this drain at so right there I guess this is the fuel pump or something like that yeah i believe that's a fuel pump right here so underneath the fuel pump you'll see and in fact i don't think i'm going to get too much oil on the machine when i'm changing it but yeah probably will we'll see and then once i do that again the filler is up here on top of course and then we will also clean up the machine get some of the sawdust off here and then check the uh, air filter up here to make sure it's uh clear and everything because we've been cutting a lot of cedar so just want to make sure we uh, keep the cedar sawdust out of the uh, engine intake. All right, so stay tuned. Okay, engine oil complete, the change out complete. Uh, really, no issue. Didn't get too much oil on here, but as you can see, there is a little bit on there. Now we're going to go ahead and blow everything down. We checked out the air filter. We're going to blow everything off just to make sure everything's running good. Uh, we cranked it. It sounds great. It's always nice when you crank up an engine first time. With new oil in there so i just think it's like yeah this is the optimal time for this engine it's it's gonna just relish this moment all right stay tuned all right folks we're out here day two with my dad we changed again the oil yesterday we changed the inline fuel filter today we also changed out the spark plugs the engine's running like a top right now and we also got a whole lot of automatic transmission fluid we're gonna go through and go ahead and uh, kind of clean up everything on the mill very impressed with this mill, and here in just a second, we're going to get kind of my dad's take on the mill. And there's a few things he likes, there's a few things he doesn't like, so yeah, we're just going to kind of feel it out and see what's his take on this, because he's run this mill a heck of a lot more than I have. I've only cut up about two, three logs this mill. This is log, I think, number 25, 26 for him right now. So... It's cutting like a champ. Now, the blade we have on there is one that Mr. Robert has sharpened up. But uh, I'm very impressed with the way the cut call that this thing's giving and then how well uh, the log dogs work. Uh, I'm grabbing a can hook as we speak. But uh, it's been a pretty dang good mill. Sorry. There we go. I'm trying to do things one handed here in the mill. So he has this little technique that he does and he likes to go ahead and put both of these log stops on there. Again, you put the log stop on there, clamp her down, and it really holds. The adjustment up and down of the mill is actually very precise and the boards that are coming off are turning out to be pretty nice. He has two scales on there. I believe one of the scales does take into consideration the curve of the blade. So just something he's looking for. The clutch engagement is very simple. And he just powers through. He also has his little uh, scale on there from our subscriber, Kate Hill Sawyer. So you can see this right here, and he can kind of figure out what size can't uh, he'll get. So, again, nice tool to have around the sawmill. As you can see, this thing just powers through it. That engine is not even bogging down in the lead. So he disengages the clutch. 
and then just bring her on back. Pretty neat. That wiper system, though, uh, keeps your blades extremely clean. So stand by. We'll do a little more shooting here in a second. This machine produces some good straight lumber. I've been watching the blade, make sure that it's tracking well. It's tracking really well. Going through knots, I haven't seen any deviation. Well folks, we're done for today. What we just finished cutting there was 400 board foot. Uh, well, roughly, there's actually a little, some smidge work in there. There's a little over 400 board foot of inch and a half by random width by eight foot. Now, my dad, he's been busy. He also has cut the cedar, of course. He cut some more cedar here. He's got a, a job where they want to do some um, a ramp off the house or anything. He's been cutting that big oak job over there. And you can see all that. I don't even know what that is. I guess that's offcuts of oak and, and pine and such over there. But the mill is running great. We've done a lot to it. I literally just sat here and I was taking the boards off and everything, but I was watching what my dad was doing on this mill all day long. And I feel pretty comfortable. I understand a lot of the reasoning behind some of the engineering things it did. And we're going to do a little take here in just a second. My take and my dad's take. Things we like about this mill and things we don't like about this mill. There's a few things I'm like, why in the heck is it this way? There's a few things I'm like, man, this is a great idea. And I'm also going to give you my take on what I think about the diesel on the blade it's an interesting take um I've, I've learned a lot after seeing this all day long and just things i'm picking up on so stay tuned here in just a second we'll give the my take my dad's take on this mill thanks all right folks so i'm going to conclude this video going over things that my dad and i like about the mill and things that we want to try to improve on the mill or things that we wish would be a little bit better so one of the things the oil or the fuel drip system i do like that it keeps everything clean we do get only a slight little buildup on here not a whole lot it comes right off something else we found out about running just a diesel on there vice water there is far less sawdust on the actual boards i mean like the boards are coming out pretty pretty darn clean i mean there's not a whole lot on there and i think that's due in part to you not running the water so it's not sticking to as much now the logs that we we're cutting are green they're you know they're cut down two days ago there's minimal sawdust <clears throat> so that's a big plus especially when you're cutting pine uh, sometimes that that just sawdust sticks on there and it's just kind of a pain uh, the clutch system if you will which is essentially just in engaging that idler gear right there and everything to uh, put pressure on the uh, uh, the drive wheel if you will I like that it's very simple and it's very easy um, if you have there's no centrifugal clutch and there's no electric clutch or anything it's it's literally if anything went wrong with it there's parts readily available at a you know auto parts store that you can probably get the head up and down being electric and back and forth being electric I didn't think I would like that however the biggest thing that I see is whenever my dad's running the mill and after we finish the last cut, he can go ahead and turn off the engine and then bring it back without having to, you know, have something running. What I also like is the fact that there's a stator on the engine itself. There's not an alternator. So there's really no draw or no load being seen by the motor driving it forward or up and down. That being said, it, there, you're not taking away any of your quote unquote horsepower all that power is dedicated to cutting so that is actually pretty cool um it's pretty smooth through the cut now that we've changed out the rheostat i think i talked about this earlier in the video so dad went ahead and changed out the rheostat that's in here and now it cuts like a dream i, I don't think there's there's no jumpiness to it beforehand it was a bit jumpy that's exactly because it had water in it um something else now this is actually Something I wish that my favorite manufacturer, Timber King, would do something like this. These log stops here, I don't think you could get. I don't think you could get a board that wasn't up against this and not have it be true. These are two by two squared. I mean, that's that's probably quarter inch thick 
uh, tubing that they're using there. It's it's really really thick gauge wall in there, uh, the wall thickness and everything. Then you have this welded on um, bracket here on both sides. I don't think you could get this mill out of alignment. It is into the frame. Everything is very heavy duty. The the system that you use to scrub the log, aka these arms right here, that's the best swing system I've seen. I don't. That's one thing that really irks me on like some of the smaller Timber Kings and everything is, is it's not as robust as that. Now on the 2000 model, like I have, it's inch and a half by two solid bar stock that goes up and down. You're not going to move that, but on their smaller mills, I would like to see some kind of tubing like what this Cook's mill has here. The chain again, going down one side of the track. I always, I, I, I imagined it causing like a shimmy effect, but it doesn't. It actually drives pretty well. I, I don't think we've seen anything with that. Um, going back to the diesel lubricator there, the needle valve that's on there is garbage. <laughs> we That's one of the things my dad and I have talked about a number of times. The amount that you have to move this is like, okay, there's full on, and then you have to like kind of slow it down to a, a drip, and it's just kind of a pain to get there. We spend more time trying to get the drip rate right on this thing. I just wish that there was... Oh, we're, well, we're going to do it. It's just a needle valve. We're going to get something that's a little bit easier to control the flow of. Um, the Getting the blade on and off, they give you enough space in here, right here. You don't actually have to open up the door there on that side. You can actually change out a blade completely from the left side of the mill and not have to worry about you know anything else. You don't have to walk around the mill. So I do like... The fact that you can pretty much change a blade out from one side of the mill. Um, the bearing system that they have on here, you've got like essentially a double pillow block bearing, if you will. Very, very large bearing. I mean, there is no play. I don't know if you could even have play <laughs> in this bearing the way it's set up. Because you have a, a shaft going through there. You've got two bearings here. You've got the case around it. I mean, there is really, I don't think there would be anything that could... Uh, cause that really to be out of alignment um i mean it's it's stout now i there is no adjustment on this side the adjustment is only done on that side and i talked about that in the last video there's only adjustment uh on the camber of the wheel out and in there's no up and down the up and down i think is or whichever there's only adjustment in one direction and the tensioning of the blade that's something else i found out you can't check your tracking of the blade unless the blade is tensioned if it is not tensioned it will not track correctly because you don't have the correct pressure on the wheels it, it's it's an interesting system it took me a second to figure it out but it works i mean true and simple it just works uh the the sawdust exit here we have have you had this clogged up at all Never. yeah i i like this design it's a large area You've got pretty heavy-duty bars there. I don't know. You'd have to work really hard to, to uh, clog that up. And one of the things is, as you can see, it, it throws sawdust 10, 12 feet out there. It's pretty impressive. Um, the fact that you are... See that little fancy clip right there? That's that's some fancy stuff. See if we can do it one-handed. There we go. <laughs> um, also... The, what was I going with? The blade, the sharpening. Uh, the, we, I just sharpened the blade on here. The blade tracks really well on these wheels. Uh, the, the guides on this are are pretty nice. Um, but I since I adjusted this mill last, uh, you know, about a month ago, has had no issue with tracking. Tracking's been great. Uh, again, we did change the oil filter and everything on here. If you need part numbers, I'll throw this in the description below. R85348 CarQuest oil filter on there. The fuel filter right here, I think it was a 10 micron filter, um, just a, a you know standard one at a uh, auto parts store. And the one we got actually said four Kohler engines, kind of funny. And then the oil we put in here is 10W30. It has a 1.75 quart capacity, um, and we just put Mobile One synthetic in there. Overall, I, I think it's a fine machine. Um, we have not shown the log turner on here. We have the log turner up over there. And I'll, I'll walk... Well, I think I've already shown that earlier in the video. It, it's nothing special. It's just a winch with a little hook, if you will, that helps turn the logs. Dad, do you have anything else to comment on this on this mill? This is probably the easiest sawmill I've ever used. Yeah, it's pretty simple. It's simple. 
So I call this the old man mill <laughs> because I mean, yep. literally the, the guy who had it before us, he said the same thing. It's something simple that, uh, you don't have to have a lot of, you know, knowledge. I mean, you could literally just run this mill. The, the frame is stout enough on this and strong enough. Uh, it's really hard to get it out of alignment. The frame itself, they have the six jacks around the way and this one, oh, that's something else. We did measure this mill. So we measured from all the way, we put the head all the way back. Measured from the blade to the furthest section that the blade would go here, which is about about right here. So the total cutting length on this mill, and this mill's been modified from Cooks and everything, you have 21 foot 7 inches. That's how much cutting area or what size log you can cut on this. 21 foot 7 inches. Now that's completely maxed out. So I would say safely you can do 21 foot and then a little bit of extra on top of there. So that's pretty impressive for a mill of this size. Um... What else? Anything else you can say? Uh, I'm only cutting smaller logs right now because we're going to get the bigger mill earlier and I haven't set up the turning system. But I can easily handle a 16-inch log, even oak, yeah. by myself. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't want to do much bigger than that because they're so heavy. But, uh, I don't have any problems with even a 16, 18-inch. What we did do is <clears throat> on the log stops, um, again, the, the previous owner... He had cut the bar in half down here, and he just had them working independently. We like the fact that they can work together. As you can see, we have a string on here. We have this, uh, you can use your foot on that to turn the log with your can't hook and everything. You turn the log with, with your can't hook, have your foot on here to adjust the log stops. And then these cams, I like these cams a lot. Um, very simple. Now, again, with a log that's goofy in shape you it's kind of hard because you have to get this over here and if you can't close the cam over it won't lock in place so you go down a little bit further close the cam in very simple uh, let's see what else other than that i mean it she trailers extremely well I, I was surprised it is very long though and the tongue is removable so we did remove the tongue so we can have the tractor over there but over in the overall i mean i'm i'm pretty impressed this is a very good um the electric up and down it's easy to see the yeah the heights that you want to bring yeah in fact let's, let's and go and show that because i easy. i was unsure how well this would work and also and we've done this by hand too you can move the he mill head up and down completely by hand but it's actually pretty easy so he'll get it close and then he'll use the little lever there or the little n wheel if you will to fine tune it and he's using the scale on the right hand side. That's uh, that takes in consideration the curve of the blade and everything. So that's pretty convenient. Um, back and forth again. Once we change out the rheostat, it, this this little little switch, if you will. Actually, I've got the power off. So even though the power is off, you can still operate this one. That power goes to this. One. It's weird, but whatever. <laughs> the more you know. So pretty neat with the, just a little. Rear stack can change the speed of the mill going through it. Uh, very simple. The now one of the things we are going to do, we haven't done it yet. We are going to change out the drive belt. The drive belt is probably the original one that's been on here, and now Dad's put over 30 hours on this mill since we got it. But there's a little bit of play in there. It's got the little keepers and everything right here, so it won't pop off. But we've had no belt slippage whatsoever. I just think a new belt uh, it'd be due for one, just because of how it looks. It does get a little bit of sine wave of floppiness to it. But it's been cutting great, folks, so I, I can't really complain. Uh, we've hit all the Zerk fittings. All the Zerk fittings, there's a lot of them on this mill. I mean, you've got, with all this contraption right here going up and down, you've got pillow block bearings essentially everywhere on this mill. And they all have Zerk fittings, and they're pretty easy to get to. Um, I can't think of what else, but uh, this this is a... Of the battery is... Yes. That, okay, that is true. Why in the heck are you putting... I don't know, an 80 pound battery that high up in the air and there's no way to bring it up and down. You have to climb up on top of the mill. The placement of the battery is questionable. I, I don't like that. <laughs> um, there's probably got to be some reason to that, but I don't know. That's weird. And also this tensioning system here, it's kind of weird. Um, it is high. I, we have 10 and a half foot here in the center. We can't bring it all the way up. We have to be very careful, but we're not putting logs of that size on there. I think you'd have to have at least a 12 foot building we said no 11 about 11 11 and a half foot uh ceiling top uh to clear there there was something else i was going to say about this 
uh, clearing the either wheel, the engine mounts. Every, I mean, oh yes, that's what it was. We measured this earlier because we actually had someone come over. Between the guides, we measured 27 inches and some change. So we're gonna say 27 inches is how wide this mill will cut, and then from the blade height up. Now, right now, you see the idler pulley is down right there, but when you engage the clutch, it does rise up. So your lowest section will be right here, and we were at 13 inches. Yeah, 13 inches is, is what your cut throat is. And it's a pretty clean box, so 13 by 27. That's that's not too bad. That's, that's one thing I, I've always had a hard time finding. In fact, we'll verify that again real quick. Let me, I'm going to open this up, slide this arm. 13 all right, so that's all the way out. So go ahead and measure between the guides again. So again, it, you'd have to be so 27 and a quarter. That gives a little bit of room. So 27, let's say 27 and a half. I think you can get it 27 and a half. Mm -hmm. That's not too bad. And again, show the measurement going up and down. Now the blade's not tensioned right now, but so you got at least 13 inches right there. So that's that's your your box you have to work within and that's a pretty large area um but that's one thing i have a hard time finding on the cook's website is how wide and what's your throat so it's it's kind of hidden in there because yes this is mp32 mil that means it can handle a 32 inch diameter log doesn't mean it can cut 32 inches wide it just means it can handle a 32 inch diameter log so if anyone else has any questions or comments, please write below and we'll try to answer them. But after seeing this mill run for about three days now, we've cut up the past three days. We've cut a little bit here and there. Uh, I think we figured up about five, six, 14 logs. 14 logs. I think it was about 600 to 700 board foot or so. They're not real big or anything, but I've watched this mill perform and I, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the solid welded frame, uh, the construction of the head, um, overall, I think this is a very good mill that will last a very long time. Again, this is on par with any Timber King or any wood miser out there or any baker. Those are like the kind of the top mill manufacturers. In, in my opinion, it's, you know, no particular order. But for me, yes, Timber King is number one. But so Timber King, uh, Cooks, Baker, Wood Miser. That's, that's kind of like uh, the order that I would rank these things. Very impressive with what this mill can do. So... Without further ado, uh, please like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you around. Hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of Searching for Sawmills. Thanks.